And Nurgan and Chelvam is one of the top ranked analysts around, including Simon Darby. In fact, he's rated number one on the Bloomberg system. And uh, Nurgan joins us from Singapore. He's a commodities analyst at uh, Royal Bank of Scotland Asia Securities. Uh, Nurgan, I hope you're having a good day. Thank you so much for joining us on this uh, Tuesday. Now, you already uh, rate Simon Darby a buy. You're, in fact, the uh, number one ranked analyst on this stock. Are you raising your forecast here after those uh, stellar results? Well, it's it's unlikely that uh, one would be swayed by the results per se, but our fundamental case for palm oil is that palm oil prices are going to rise. We expect a shortage of this commodity in the next couple of years. Uh, we expect El Nino to drive down productivity. Uh, on the demand side, we see rising demand from China and India. Both markets have liberalized the import of this commodity. We also expect uh, biodiesel to contribute about 6 million tons uh, of demand, additional demand uh, to uh, palm oil, which will deplete the inventory levels. And we expect the stock to usage ratio to fall from 15 to 8 percent. So we expect prices uh, to be averaging about $850 a ton this year and $950 a ton next year. Yeah, uh, Nurgan, and I was looking on the Bloomberg system in terms of analyst ratings and uh, also analyst targets. In fact, uh, you're probably one of the more bullish analysts around on this stock. You're looking for a target price of 11.24 and change, uh, with uh, Sam Darby now tra trading at eight ringgits and 65. Uh, why do you think you're more bullish than the average analyst on this stock? Well, there are two reasons. One reason is that my uh, CPO price expectation is probably higher than the rest of the street. The second is that we expect productivity to improve for Saim Darby uh, in the next couple of years. The operative factors are the uh, fact that this company is, will be the beneficiary of the merger of three uh, previously state-owned companies. The whole group continues to be state-owned, but there will be merger benefits or synergy benefits uh, from managing a larger entity. Yeah. Now, while you're bullish, Nergan, it seems that uh, most analysts are pretty much scattered across the board. You're looking at eight buys, 11 holes, nine sells. I mean, there seems to be not much consensus and direction for the stock amongst analysts. One of the concerns about the stock is the status of the non-core businesses. Uh, the company also controls non-core businesses uh, such as uh, retailing, automobile manufacture, property, and other unconnected businesses. Uh, but the prospects for these businesses are closely allied with the Malaysian economy, and the Malaysian economy is expected to recover. And in this environment, I think the risks for the non-core businesses are receding. Okay. And do you think there's a maybe better upside in the, uh, say, the Indonesian players, such as Indofood Agra and the Golden Agra? Yes, uh, Indofood Agri and Golden Agri had the advantage of being in a much more liquid market, Singapore and uh, the operations are in Indonesia. So the fact that it's uh, one step removed from the operations in a financial center such as Singapore provides it with a major advantage. We see both companies as uh, excellent players on rising CPO prices because they also have the added advantage of uh, a rise in CPO production of about uh, 15 to 20 percent uh, in the next couple of years. Yeah, now when it comes to uh, Indo food, it looks like you're very bullish as well, Nergan. And you're looking for a potential upside of 58% from its last close. Again, much higher than consensus. Uh, you know, what are you seeing here that other analysts aren't? My uh, expectation is that the company should rise by about 50%. It's trading at about 12 times right now. It should trade at something like 18 times. Uh, the growth that you uh, generate from rising CPO production along with the rise in uh, CPO prices will uh, fuel this company's earnings. There's the added factor of the company diversifying its earning stream by getting into businesses such as sugar production and uh, other uh, important crops which are in shortage at this point. Yeah, what about uh, the added b benefit of Indofood Agra and that uh, is actually a food maker, which is a staple these days, and a lot of people are playing on consumption plays? That's right. That will contribute about 10 to 12 percent of earnings, but that's a growing portion of their earnings. They have uh, excellent market recognition. In fact, they control the number one brand in Indonesia for cooking oil. So that provides more resilience uh, for this company's earnings profile. Okay, let's talk about Golden Agar, which is your other uh, Indonesian uh, plantation pick, uh, we could say. It's interesting because Golden Agra uh, it has a lot of volatility. In fact, it's a penny stock. I mean, how much volatility does an investor need to stomach before he gets a healthy return here? 
the fundamental factor in this company is that, as you pointed out, it's a penny stock. But despite being a penny stock, it has fantastic liquidity. It trades about $35 million a day in terms of average daily turnover, which is very impressive. Uh, it's trading at a discount to the rest of the market at about 11 to 12 times. And for every percentage rise in the palm oil price, you get a 1.5% rise in this uh, stock price. Yeah, but less of return, less of upside in a Golden Agra than, say, Indofood Agra. You're looking maybe 20% returns or so. Why is that? The, the reason is that this company, as a penny stock, has a limitation to which uh, it can trade to. So uh, for that reason, we are, uh, we are curbing our upside on this name.